A Plaguelands Media Production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media. <clears throat> now, before I start today's uh, review, there's a, th a few things I just want to kind of address. <clears throat> First of all, my voice, a little bit scratchy, I apologize for that, that's just the way it is. Uh, you might hear some noises from outside, uh, mainly kind of car noises. That's just because it is stinking hot here, so I have the window open and people don't know how the fuck to be quiet. But, uh, this book that I am reviewing today <clears throat> is one that was actually recommended by someone who commented on an earlier video when I did my review of Nightmare Alley. I, uh, I got a comment from a watcher called Emmerich Inquisitor, I hope I'm getting that name right, who kind of recommended The Circus of Dr. Lowe by Charles G. Finney. Now, I've had this book for quite some time. I uh, just didn't get around to reading it. And then a friend of the channel, she knows who she is, um, when I gave her some suggestions on what I should review next, this was the one that she picked. So this is the one that I am reviewing today. Now a few things before I uh, begin. This book really fucking pissed me off. But it pissed me off for a very particular reason. It's that books like this should be taught in schools, should be taught at universities, and because of the language uh, that is used in uh, this book, it's probably never... There we go. Uh, ...going to be taught. You know what? I'm just going to pause it here very briefly and go and shut that fucking window. Okay, I'm back, and that should be better. I just wish the whole fucking world would shut the fuck up for a minute. But, uh, that is not to be. Okay. Books like this should be taught, but they're not going to be taught because the language used is outdated, and there are terms in this book that people today are going to find offensive, and that is a given. But you have to understand that this book was written in 1935 and the terms that are used and the, dare I say it, slurs that are used in this book are a product of the time. It really fucking shits me to tears that people can't get past the fact that books that were written decades ago oh, we can't read them now, or you shouldn't read them now, or you can't teach them now because they contain things that are socially unacceptable. I mean, for fuck's sake, people, grow the fuck up. Oh, we can't watch Gone with the Wind anymore because of the race issues. Uh, Disney has put a kibosh on Song of the South because it, it, people seemingly believe it promotes slavery, which it fucking doesn't. But there you go, there is a blackface issue with uh, Br'er Rabbit and the Tar Baby, but that's a whole kind of different thing. Are we supposed to just forget art for the sake of art because it's no longer fucking relevant in, in a society where people are too easily offended or people don't understand that things have a fucking context? Literature has a context. I mean, for fuck's sake. Early Stephen King contains racial slurs. You're not trying to fucking uh, cancel him. Oh, no, of course not, because he's Stephen King. But if it's a fucking author that few people have heard about that's talking about, I don't know, transgender issues or homosexuality or... Fuck, even a child having same-sex parents. Ooh, we've got to fucking be careful about that shit. No, I'm, I'm sorry. No, if you don't fucking like that, dislike this fucking video. I don't give a shit. People need to be 
understanding of the context of which literature is written, of the time that things are written. You cannot put today's moral and social values on something that was written in 1935. All right. I apologize for that rant, but I'm getting a little sick and tired of uh, loading up the computer every morning and seeing news articles telling me what I can and cannot read because it's socially and morally acceptable or socially and morally unacceptable. I should be the judge of what I can and cannot read. I should be the judge of what I deem morally and socially acceptable and unacceptable. And if you don't like that, fucking go to a new video. I don't give a shit. That's my two cents. I'm talking about the Circus of Dr. Lowe. Yes, it's pronounced Lowe, not Lau. I got that wrong when I initially read it, but it will be uh, cleared up. Uh, this was a book written by Charles G. Finney. Um, this is a second edition printing. The first edition printing came with um, art. This second edition printing has that same art in there with a little explanation about the artist uh, when it comes to reading the forward and the introduction. Usually things that I do not do, but in the case of The Circus of Dr. Lowe, I did read the forward and I did read the introduction, and both are very, very interesting. I am just going to give you my uh, straight thoughts on this. Maybe a few spoilers, which I apologize for. Uh, unavoidable. But let's just grit. Look at that. Let's just grit straight in. Look. Fucking can't even speak English. I'm so fucking choking on my own rage here. Let's just get straight into the next episode of. Okay. I've given myself time to calm down. Now. The first thing you have to understand about the Circus of Dr. Lowe is that it is a book outside of its time in so much as there are uh, racial slurs used in this novel, both against the circus owner Dr. Lowe, but also by a sea serpent who does decide to use the N-word when talking about a small child that he did devour. Make of that what you will. Uh, the character of Dr. Lowe is uh, a very interesting one. As the circus owner, he comes off almost as a caricature of Asian people when he is talking to the, the people of the town that the circus is in, um, which is, and I'm probably pronouncing the name wrong, Abalone, Arizona. I could be pronouncing it wrong. I don't really care at this point. When he's talking to the, the people of the town, he's talking as a typical Asian man, and even the author has written R's as L's uh, to kind of get the accent across. When he is giving his speeches about the various circus um, attractions, he talks like a normal person. It is very reminiscent of how we all thought of Yoda after watching Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and then how we saw Yoda at the end of um, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Make of that what you will. Now, um, this book is very different to Nightmare Alley in that Nightmare Alley was a more realistic uh, portrayal of a typical circus, especially in the Depression era when this is set. This has realism in as far as the people of the town of Abalone or Abalone. You know what, I'm just going to say Abalone from now on and if it's wrong, you know, Leave a comment in the description below. They are all portrayed as hardworking, um, out of luck, uh, husbands, wives, children, 
are very, very realistic for what you would imagine a depression era town would be. And then you have the circus itself, which is uh, absolutely fantastical. And I say that in as much as there are no regular circus attractions here. There are no elephants. There are no jugglers or clowns or anything like that. The circus attractions in the Circus of Dr. Lowe um, are all mythological creatures that he has captured and imprisoned uh, in some way, although imprisoned is a very loose term as only one of the attractions feels like they have been slighted by being captured by Dr. Lowe. This is a darkly comical novel. And I say that because the people of the town come to this circus not quite understanding what it is. They initially meet the circus as a parade coming through the town. There are only three uh, attractions in the parade. Uh, a giant snake, um, a bear that many people believe is either... Some people see it as a bear, some people see it as a man, and then there are arguments over whether the man is Russian or not. And uh, finally, a green dog who seems to be made of plants. <clears throat> and the dog's wagon is driven by a satyr or, or a fawn uh, from Greek mythology. So people are initially skeptical of the, uh, the circus itself, but everyone goes there anyway. Um, and the novel is people's experiences with the various attractions, followed by the, um, the big top kind of circus thing, and that is uh, pretty much the end of it. What makes this uh, novel so unique, in my opinion, is that the people of the town see things that are mythological, that are strictly out of the imagination. They see things like, um, for example, a chimera, which is a part lion, part eagle, part dragon, uh, and they just take these at, at face value. Um, there are scenes where, for example, there's a fortune teller and a widow goes to speak to the fortune teller to find out about her fortune. She has spoken to many fortune tellers who have all told her that her future looks bright. And then this fortune teller is like, you've got nothing. Um, it's darkly, darkly comical to have this woman be told that the plot of land she invested in has no oil. She's never going to mean a man. She's never going to have kids. Everything she does in her day-to-day -day routine, she's just going to continue doing. That's her future. And then when she leaves the tent and sees some uh, friends that she knows, they say, oh, what did the fortune teller say? And she lies to them. Oh, he says that the oil is, is looking up. It's absolutely hilarious some of the interactions between the characters and the attractions there's a medusa that turns a woman to stone and her husband is just like okay whatever and then wheels the statue out of the uh of the tent um there's a couple of frat boys that go to see the peeping tom show uh drunk and then they kind of get into an interaction. There's a, a woman who doesn't believe the uh, satyr is real until he starts to seduce her. And even after that, she's like, I could have done things to him. It's really uh, fantasy mixed with realism in the wrong sort of way. And that's what makes it good.
The sad thing is that uh, Charles G. Finney never really had a blockbuster breakout fantasy novel. Uh, this one, I believe, was his biggest um, kind of hit. The ending is kind of jarring. There are some <clears throat> other very comical moments in it. Uh, the sea serpent talking to the um, proofreader is pretty funny. Uh, we have some great art. Um, by, I believe, an artist that actually did the cover for Time Magazine, uh, if I'm not mistaken. This is a very strange book to uh, review, in as much as I did enjoy it, don't, uh, don't get me wrong, but I don't think I can recommend it to everyone for the reason that it was written in 1935. It deals with the Depression. At the same time, the uh, the circus era made famous by uh, P.T. Barnum, uh, Phineas T. Barnum. Forget about The Greatest Showman. That movie was bullshit. Uh, the actual P.T. Barnum. Characters are stereotyped in a good way. Don't, uh, don't get me wrong. Um... It's not offensive. Well, some people might find it offensive. I mean, you have images like that. All in all, it's exactly like going to a circus. It's an oddity. Every sideshow is explained. The characters' reactions are explained. Everyone is nonchalant about how weird this thing is with creatures like the Chimera, a sea serpent that actually has an in-depth conversation with uh, the proofreader at the local newspaper. And the sea serpent uh, talks about how he actually killed some people for food. And then he went and found a mate, and do humans do that? And who is the more human, the sea serpent or the human himself? It's, it's an odd book, uh, don't get me wrong. But as a product of its time, as a, uh, I want to say somewhat modern fantasy novel, which is what it is, it's an incredible read, and I want to recommend it, but I just know that people out there are going to read it and get offended by terminology and things like that, by not understanding it is a product of its actual time. At the end of the book, we also get the catalogue, which... They recommend that you read after you have finished the novel. And the catalog just tells you what happened to the male characters, what happened to the female characters, what happened to the creatures, to the children, to the animals. It just adds uh, closure, I guess, to the to the story itself because the whole thing happens over the span of one day well uh kind of a night and a day um if you can kind of get over the the beginning of the book itself now the person who did the forward john marco <coughs> is an author himself, a fantasy author. I have, after reading his introduction, um, I did decide to purchase one of his books to see what kind of an author he is. And the person that did the introduction, Michael Martone, is a professor of English at the University of Alabama and an author himself. So... 
reading the introduction and the foreword are both very much well worth your time. Uh, not something I would usually do, but in this case, I actually did. So this is the Circus of Dr. Lowe. And to just finish, I will give you the uh, spiel that Dr. Lowe gives to the people that come to visit the circus so you get an understanding of what this book is actually about. <clears throat> this is the circus of Dr. Lowe. We show you things that you don't know. We tell you of places you'll never go. We've searched the world both high and low to capture beasts for this marvellous show from mountains where maddened winds did blow to islands where zephyrs breathed sweet and slow. Oh, we've spared no pains, and we've spared no dough, and we've dug at the secrets of long ago, and we've risen to heaven and plunged below, for we wanted to make it one hell of a show, and the things you'll see in your brains will glow long past the time when the winter snow has frozen from summer's furlough below. For this is the circus of Dr. Lowe, and youth may come and age may go, but no more circuses like this show. That is the Circus of Dr. Lowe by George, uh, sorry, by Charles G. Finney. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, thank you to Emmerich Inquisitor for recommending this book after my Nightmare Alley um, review. Thank you to my Facebook fan for suggesting it out of the books that I, the book titles that I kind of sent out. Um, she was the one that said you should read this. It sounds interesting. Uh, to everyone else, please stay safe. Uh, have a lovely rest of your day. But most importantly, read a fucking book, people. <laughs>